you guys welcome back for another episode of the can you guys see my shirt that you say what show you guys go ahead and get you some popcorn or something have a seat let's come talk converse honey <laughs> you say what now y'all we're going to talk about a number of different things today i uh, uh before we get started go ahead and subscribe to the channel Go ahead and give the video a thumbs up, click share. We're on here Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. I don't, not unless there's situations and complications. I don't know what I'm going to upload on Monday, Wednesday, Friday, but we got a variety of things to upload. Hope you guys enjoy movie night on Friday. I hope you had a wonderful weekend and we are at hump, hump day. You guys. <laughs> now, normally I don't get into musical type stuff i just stopped watching like a war shows and all of those different things <clears throat> for many many years i've stopped watching it but because of the pandemic and everybody's been kind of stuck in the house you know when the pandemic started then people came up with creative ways to uh entertain people because you couldn't go to concerts you know couldn't go to the movie theater and so um people started djing like um on television or either on social media platforms. And then people started creating this wonderful thing called Versus. So I'm like, oh, this is awesome. We can sit here and watch, you know, your, your favorite group or someone in the same genre or uh, what have you. Uh, two different R&B groups come together and they battle one another. I don't know if they're technically, well, verses, yeah. So they're battling one another and singing their, you know, some of your favorite songs or some of their favorite songs, some of their hit songs. You guys, so when it first started out, it was great. I remember seeing, um, oh, what was the lady's name? Gladys Knight and um, uh, Patti LaBelle. And then I saw, uh, I think, was Mary J. Blige on one? I don't, let me know if Mary J. Blige was on one um, with someone. And, you know, people were putting in the comments and different stuff. Oh, I would love to see this group go against this group or this artist against this artist. And y'all, so let's talk about the last verses. Honey, I don't know where it all went wrong. Uh, you know, I really love music. I love all genre of music. I, I love uh rock some rock and roll i love some country music i used to drive uber so some of the uh people that i drove around want to listen to b105 which is a country station so i started liking some some little country music like okay this is really good you don't want to watch it when you you know you don't want to listen to it when you're depressed because you may end up you know being more depressed listening to country music but it had like you know it's some good artists out there or what have you and so i like um 80s music and some hip-hop music and i like all kind of music and just like when i read books i like all kind of authors i don't get stuck in one genre of music and i've noticed that um this younger generation honey don't know how to perform they don't know how to really give a show um years ago <laughs> i went to a prince concert and honey that little man got to rest his purple soul Honey, he has some little bitty boots. Look like Yosemite Sam little boots. And um, if you don't know who Yosemite Sam is, look it up and look up Yosemite Sam boots. And he had these little bitty boots on, honey, and he danced his little bitty purple heart from one side of that little bitty purple stage to the other side of that little bitty purple stage, honey, from the time the concert started. And honey, he made me dance my little bitty feet off just watching this man dance, you know, just giving a great show. Michael Jackson, a great show, know how to perform. Um, Beyonce, I, you know, I, I listen to some Beyonce songs. I'm not a fan fan of Beyonce. I'm definitely not obsessed with Beyonce and I'm definitely not part of the beehive, but I appreciate <clears throat> her work because sister girl works, honey, and them that she working and dancing and pop locking. And I watched one of her documentaries of her putting together a show and baby, this sister is working for them coins, honey. Them coins don't come easy for sister Beyonce. Shout out to the bees, buzz, buzz. So, but I noticed that some of this younger generation of people, baby, they don't, they don't know how to get no show. Now, you know, New Edition know how to give a show. The Temptations give a show. And, you know, some of the boy groups that was out, they be dancing, they pop, 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 and coordinating. I don't know 
know what happened, baby, but let me talk about <laughs> Ray J, Amaria, and Mario. I think it was somebody else, but honey, all the foolishness and shenanigans, y'all, I don't even remember who I was on that stage. I seen somebody child on the stage, and I said, was the baby, he had no babysitter, you know? Uh, uh, I got a couple of grandbabies, but they in daycare, and, and we average working people. I'm not nowhere near rich. I'm gonna be a multimillionaire one day, but I'm no we're near rich, but I, I would think if I had like an engagement, I would try to find a babysitter. And Ray J brought some kid up there, and I'm thinking, what time is this verse is going on? And why is this little boy up here asleep, laying on? I guess it was his daddy. I guess Ray J, the little boy daddy. I didn't check into that, but he's uh uh you know got a baby on the stage again, and and it was just y'all. Did you see it? If you have not seen it and you don't know what I'm talking about, it behooves you. And I don't even know where the word behooves come from. It behooves you guys to go watch if you can bear these verses. Honey, these people, it was a mess. And one thing about Ray J, I never honestly, this little piece of hair, I never thought Ray J could sing. I just think Ray J had the opportunity to be in the music industry based upon his sister. Now, I like Brandy, and I love Brandy's voice and all of that, and Brandy has evolved, and this girl does not freaking age at all. And I've been a fan of Brandy since she was a kid when she first came out. But Ray J, in his one wish, I wish... He would have did something different. I wish maybe he would have went in a different line of work because Ray J, his voice was atrocious. <laughs> Is that a word? I don't even know how to spell atrocious, but that's about the most horrific word I could think of. This brother's voice. I have no folks in my local church, honey, that could sing One Wish better than him. He was yodeling and screeching and howling and it was bad, y'all. It was really bad. And then once the music stopped, y'all, Ray J tried to keep on singing. I said, boy, cut it off. First of all, you should have never started it. But cut it all the way off. And I don't understand how that child stayed laying down that whole time. Because even when you're yodeling, a dog will look up and be like, huh? Like, you know how the dogs be like, woo, woo, woo. Because they hear some kind of noise that's hurting their ears. How did that child stay asleep, honey? Uh, is this child abused to sing like that? I felt abused, y'all. I felt abused coming up out of there uh, because this boy can't sing, y'all. Even on a good day, I never thought Ray J could sing. The song was a little hit only because of the words and it had a nice little melody, but his voice, throw the whole throat away. Throat, just take your thunk and throw your thunk. Throw your thunk away, honey, Ray J sounded horrible. And I saw a post that his sister Brandy put up and she said, I'm going to um, I'm going to screenshot this because for some reason it keep getting deleted. And she let him have it. She said, I, one wish I wish I had was, one wish was I wish you would listen to me. I wish you would have drank the tea that you were supposed to drink. I wish you wouldn't have talked all day like I told you to. So obviously when you sing, you know, you got to keep your little vocals moistured or whatever. And I know they can't drink like acidic things like pop and all of those different things because of your vocal cords. That's your money, honey. Brandy make her money. Brandy ain't selling t-shirts, honey. This is me trying to sell t-shirts. Brandy ain't selling t-shirts. So Brandy make her money off her throat. So not off her throat. My God, let me take that back. Brandy takes her money off her singing. So you have to take care of your voice that's sitting down in your throat. <laughs> My goodness. So she must have tried to, she must have advised Ray J to drink this, uh, um, I guess, some type of tea she put together that works for her and, you know, and, and rest your voice. Don't be out there talking and screaming all day because you got to sing at night. Honey, that boy didn't listen and he should have because he sounded a mess. And Amaria, I was shocked that boy, 
these folks can't sing. I don't know if it was just who you know. Now, I know Amarion was in the B2K group, so maybe he sound good because he was blended in, but the boy cannot sing. Or maybe some people sound good in the studio. You know how you go in the bathroom and you sound good in the shower, honey? In the shower, I sound like Mariah Carey. You, you just can't tell me I don't sound like Mariah Carey in the shower. But outside the shower, it's a mess. So I don't know if these guys sound good in the studio, but they don't sound good in, in live and living color. Now, the one that did sound good, that's been very underrated, is Mario. Mario sounded amazing. And I'm like, oh, okay then, Mario. Now, another person that wasn't there that I feel like didn't get enough, doesn't get enough recognition or is underrated was Neo. Neo wrote a lot of songs for a lot of people, and Neo can sing, but he just never reached that plateau. Mario never reached that plateau in the music industry, but Amarion did, and that boy can't sing. Y'all, if you get some time, if you want to take some time, or if you just want to take my opinion, honey, them brothers sounded atrocious. And they just was on the stage acting, uh, honey, a fool or just, it was just a mess. That was by far, I wish I had a gavel. That was by far the most ghetto <laughs> verses I have ever seen in my life. Cancel all the verses. Make these people audition for the verses. You know, because maybe your voice sounded good back in 92, but honey, something happened along the way in 2022, and your throat just ain't giving the way that it was given before because they lost something along the way. <laughs> A mess. So now, now here we come to the BET Awards. Y'all, I have not watched the BET Awards since... I don't know what group was up there. I don't know if it was a Wu-Tang Clan or somebody. And they decided they're going to start fighting. All I know is the BET Award, you're liable not to make it home, baby. You may go to the BET Award, but you could get shot at the mother-loving BET Awards. I think the last time I watched the BET Awards was probably back when Diddy had said something about somebody. And, honey, it was about to be on and shapop it. You know, so the, uh, it just always was a fight. You knew the BET Awards, it was going to be some type of fight or the Hip Hop Awards or whatever the awards was, you knew it was going to be a bunch of fighting. But I watch, I like to watch sometimes the red carpet. I mean, I watch the whole program, but I watch the red carpet, see what people got on. I don't know what done happened. Uh, let me tell you something. When I go somewhere and I got a special event to go to, honey, I'm going to throw on the nines, baby. I'm going to pull out my good uh, uh, girdle. I'm going to find me an outfit. I'm going to spend my little money. I'm going to make sure I get with my stylist shade so she can whip my hair up, honey. I'm going to get my daughter to do my makeup, baby, because this is my moment to shine. I don't know if these people just really didn't give a crap about the BET Awards like that. I don't know if... Uh, somebody maybe didn't tell them they was going to the BET Award and they just wore some regular stuff and walked on the stage. I don't know what happened with the BET Awards on the red carpet because, honey, first of all, let's talk about Saucy Santana. If y'all don't know who Saucy Santana is, this is Saucy Santana. Baby. Somebody had wrote a post or left a, 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 a comment. Y'all said he done stole the Grinch legs. <laughs> what? <laughs> Wait, let me tell you something. First of all, what you ain't gonna do is I'm not gonna hire no stylist to style me. And you, let me tell you something. I respect everybody. This stuff made me upset about some stuff. I got to get it off my chest. Let me tell you something. I'm not a stylist, but I know how to dress. You ain't nobody. You are not going to convince me that hairy leg boots is in. I don't give a freak if hairy leg boots is the, is the next thing that they had on the New York uh, Fashion Week runway, honey. I don't care. You're not going to convince me to wear no hairy leg boots, baby. <laughs> and green toe. You're not going to convince me to wear no hairy leg boots at no given time. 
I don't care if they Balenciaga. I don't care if they Hermes. I don't care if it's Gucci, Fendi, and Louis Vuitton all mixed together, Dolce and Cabana. I don't care what it is. You're not going to convince me that some hairy green leg boots is popping. You just ain't going. I don't care if I'm in Alaska. I don't care if I'm up there in Colorado and it ain't nothing but a pair of steel toe boots and some hairy leg boots, baby. I'm going to put on them steel toe boots and that metal going to freeze my toes, baby, before I put on a pair of green hairy leg boots, baby. You got me stuck. Who, what, and they have a the nerves to be taking a picture like it's the bomb.org. Honey, I didn't say dot com. I said dot org, dot good. You got me stuck, baby. Hairy leg boots and broad shoulder. Hairy leg boots. You now the jacket little thing is fine. You could take. I don't know if the man get hips or not, but you could take the hip part away from me and just go and get me straight. I may do a little shoulder. No, I take that back. I won't do shoulders because I'm already boxy built. So you got to know your body type. But hairy leg boots. Hairy leg boots, baby. I, I'm stuck on hairy leg boots, y'all. Let me go ahead and shift to the next one. Because you're not going to sell me a pair of hairy leg boots and then tell me to go out there and walk no red carpet in no furry boots. Now, I may do a furry shoe. I do a little toe-out shoe with a heel with some little fur on the front. But some whole leg boots. You might as well have had Jim Carrey standing next to him. Jim Carrey, honey, standing next. I just cannot. I cannot. Now, here we go for Lizzo. Now, normally Lizzo is always bucket naked. Every time you see Lizzo, you see Lizzo little booty, Lizzo backside, Lizzo whatever. Lizzo decided to throw some clothes on. So I, for once, even if I like the outfit or don't like the outfit, the outfit is, yeah, it's giving me mediocre. It's giving me mediocre. It kind of reminds me of that lingerie that people wear, them boudoirs. Am I saying that right? The boudoirs. Where they had lingerie parties. The little young girls had a lingerie party. First of all, I'm too old for a sleepover. But they do a little lingerie party and they had those little sheer things on and they got the little fur uh, uh, feathers and stuff around it. It's giving me boudoir. But it was good to see her because I very rarely have seen her fully dressed. I don't follow her like that, but whenever I see her like on TikTok or platforms, I see her booty. And she just out there. And then that's her business. That's what she want to do. I just ain't for it. But she, she giving me boudoir with that. So her outfit was okay. And compared to how the other dude looked, she looked, she looked fine. She looked fine for me, but that was Lizzo. Now here's Ari. It's very much giving me beach wear. <laughs> it's giving me beach, honey. It's giving me crochet cover up. It's with a train, honey. <laughs> and what nobody there to carry her train. Let me tell you something. Honey, if you're going to pay somebody, can you lay my train out and pick my train up? Or let it be laid out and let the train drag, drag behind me? Huh? She had to bend down, stoop, get up, a whole thing. The only thing I don't like, I like her hair, but I don't like her hair for that outfit. I felt like she could have pulled her hair up like in a high bun or something like that and then let all of this. But it was giving me, it wasn't giving me red carpet. It's not giving me red carpet. It was giving me a wedding on the beach. A wedding, a little wedding dress on the beach type thing or something you would wear to somebody wedding that was down in Maui or something and they was getting married. It's giving me very much wedding on the beach type thing. That's what it gave me. But she modeled people clothes on Instagram. This no, she, I think the sister should have got another outfit. I don't know if they got stylists or not, but this was not that for red carpet. So it was lacking a whole lot of luster. Matter of fact, it wasn't no luster. She ain't got no pearls on. She ain't got no glittery nothing. It just, it wasn't giving, y'all. It just wasn't. <laughs> it didn't complete the assignment. <laughs> Jesse Smollett, what if I <laughs> Jesse Smollett, honey. First of all, them clothes don't even fit Jess. <laughs> Jess, why would they bring him on here? And it's Pride Month. What if he the one that lied on somebody and said they beat him up? I said, Lord. The man, did he lie on 
He lied on somebody. He lied and said he got beat up. But I'm thinking, that why would they bring this boy out? Why, why he get there? And I'm thinking, was that the outfit he wore when he went to jail? How long was he in jail? Maybe he lost weight. Maybe he was a little bit bigger before. But that outfit ain't fitting him. And it's just beige. It, just, <laughs> it ain't red carpet, baby. But they done pulled this brother out and just put him there. And he like, we out here. <laughs> I'm outside, y'all. He happy to just be sprung. He happy to be able to walk the streets. He just happy to be out in the streets. <laughs> just go sit there. Now, I really did like Kirk Franklin's blouse. <laughs> Get your wife a blouse bag. First of all, remember, if y'all watch my story about me being down there at that uh, Taste of Cincinnati with that satin, that, see how hot Kirk Franklin looked? That was so me. Hot as heck, y'all. Satin material. It don't matter if you got your little chest out, uh, 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 Kirk. It's still satin. And you over there, BET is probably, the BET was out there in LA. You out in that good LA heat with satin, no, honey? Satin? Oh my God, he looks very hot, very hot. <laughs> he like, if y'all don't take this picture, so I can get out this sub, baby. But that's how I look, y'all, with that satin shirt on. Very much hot, honey. But I did enjoy seeing Mariah Carey, y'all. I did, no, that, that, yeah, I did enjoy seeing Mariah Carey. I don't know who the little girl was the same before her lacto or I don't know that little girl uh what she do. She sang, obviously. But I did enjoy seeing Mariah Carey. But I was just trying to wonder why come every time Mariah Carey come out, somebody gotta hold her hand. Honey, Mariah gonna make sure she don't trip and fall. She ain't trying to have no undiva moment. But she sounded really good. Cause normally the only time I hear Mariah is when I'm playing her Christmas song. She ain't really came out with nothing recently or whatever. But honey, Mariah did sing. She did Mimi did sing, honey, Mimi sang. But that was <laughs> Honey, the BET awards, y'all got to come better. Start making these people audition. Like, okay, so what are you gonna wear? Let me see what you're thinking about wearing. Because the red carpet, honey, was beige. Cause they didn't come with the fire. If you're gonna be on the red carpet, honey, come with Ow, the fire. I know a local stylist, honey, named Sean. Honey, that Sean, Sean will dress you, baby, to the gods. Honey, I'm gonna put a picture up here. Sean will dress you to the gods, honey. They should have had hired him. They should have hired him to come out there and style some of them. But honey, I just can't get over saucy and them them Grinch legs. Them just, I just, mm mm. Mm mm. No, honey, the, the BET Award, and I know why now I don't really watch it because of that shenanigans. I don't know what happened in 2022. Maybe we'll come back again on 2023, and it'll be a little bit better. But it was very much giving me very mediocre and very, like, just throw on an outfit and stand there and take a picture in front of a billboard. Now, Taraji looked pretty. Taraji looked pretty. She looked like she was going to the red carpet. But uh, you know what? It I don't know. Kirk's been to the BET Awards before. But so for some of the new people, like I don't remember ever seeing or hearing about Ari being there or some other people, Saucy being there. Maybe they just don't know how to dress for red carpet. You got to take it up a notch. In a level, you know, when you're when you're in something like that, but honey, it, it just was a mess. So <laughs> you say what? You say go home. You say try on something different. You say try again next year, cause this year you didn't you didn't complete the assignment. You didn't no, you didn't understand the assignment. That's the word. You ain't understand the assignment. They did not understand it. Few understand. They got a little memo. Very a uh, whole lot didn't understand it. I, they look like they was going to just wherever, not for wherever. Should have threw it on, honey. Don't invite me, baby. I'm going to be there to the nines with a whole gold crown on. Quit playing with me. Oh, you guys, let's talk about I'm done running them people to the ground, honey. But I had to speak my piece, honey, because I've been upset about this music industry. Let's talk about this hearing, you guys, that they got, child, for Trump. 
yeah, I said Trump, for him instigating the whole, you know, uh, voting thing. So I'm watching it on the news, you guys, and they brought up, um, I'm watching the hearing, and uh, they brought this uh, two ladies um, that worked at the, at the voting center down in um, Atlanta. And the woman began, they began to ask this lady questions. And I wish I knew her name. I'm gonna look her name up, guys, you guys. And they asked her, um, how was her life affected after, you know, that uh, the lies basically that was told that they were miscounting, that they were putting votes in suitcases, which incited the people to go and storm the Capitol by saying, you know, it was just a spiral effect and things like that. So this woman, you guys, began to tell her story. And she said that, first of all, she had been working there for years. She no longer has a job. And the, everyone that worked at the bo voting booth now has quit. This woman received death threats. She had to leave her home for over two months because it wasn't safe for her to go home because her name was mentioned as one of the ones that was hiding votes and miscounting, trying to fudge, quote unquote, the election and all of those different things. Her and her daughter both received multiple death threats, had to leave their homes. They had to ask their neighbors to watch their home for them, that no one would come and vandalize their home. And this woman uh, began, they said, so do you have any closing uh, thing that you want to say? And she began to express that um, to have the president, former president of the United States, she called him 45, honey, to have 45 accuse her of something when he's supposed to protect the people and be there for the people. And she really expressed and told those people, you have absolutely no idea what it feels like to have someone mention your name and point finger at you as if you didn't do your job and the whole entire nation knew about it. And this woman was upset, she was distraught, and she was basically saying that her life would never be the same. Now, I've worked at a voting poll before, and you know, a lot of older people volunteer to work at the voting polls just to supplement their income, and they're faithful you know, to it. If you go to your local voting polls, um, I know in Ohio, a majority of the people are older people, that they are serious about voting, they'll get you registered, you'll come in, and this woman reminded me of what we have here. I don't know how it is in your area, but what we have here are a lot of older people, and the voting polls pay, you know, pretty good or what have you, and this was, you know, I don't know, I believe for her, this was her regular job, but she had been there for years, and at her age, she was about in her 60s or so, at her age, now you have to find another job is outrageous. And she said that it was an outward lie because they were there filming. I guess investigators came in and filmed them counting the votes. And the ones that were counted, they take and they put it in a suitcase, put it under the table because those have already been accounted for to move them out the way. So then they would count some more, put them in a suitcase and stick it under. So they gave this video footage to the president to 45, gave it to him, and him, I guess, in an advisor or a lawyer or somebody, they said, took and shrunk, you know how you edit the video, and took uh, the part of the video footage where they were pulling the suitcases off from underneath the table, took that portion and ran with it and said, see, they're hiding votes in suitcases and taking them out where they were supposed to take them out because they had already been counted for at the end of the day. And this was what was the uh, onset of it spiraling to January, uh, I think it was January 6th, when they stormed the Capitol. And I, it made me think, cause so like maybe a day or so later, um, I saw something by the Associated Press that um, right at the height of this hearing, um, where they said that Bill Cosby was, um, what was it, Bill Cosby, uh, new charges had came up on Bill Cosby regarding some 16-year-old girl being at the Playboy Mansion, Hugh Hefner, and charges were coming against him. 
And the first thing I thought, you're trying to deflect. You're now, here you are, talking about 45. That's, that's what everybody's watching. And now you're trying to sway the people by media to go look at a black man for something. And I looked, I said, I'm, look, Bill Cosby saga, we already did Bill Cosby saga. That's already been dealt with. And it's like, okay, what was a child doing at a Hugh Hefner Playboy Mansion? You know, but if you're going to get Bill Cosby for doing things, then you need to get all these other guys. You know, where, well, Hugh Hefner, I guess he's, he's dead. Go get all these other guys that's been doing stuff too, not negating whatever that is, but it's the timing of it, how the media has a way of trying to sway your attention this way so you won't pay attention to what's going on over here. And I refuse to get caught up in Bill Cosby stuff when you have a whole serious thing going on over here with a former president that needs to be addressed. That's the swaying of the media. So with that, you guys stay focused. The media has a way of swaying things. And I guess I've said that so loosely before, but having, when it became personal for me was when the video of me doing Starbucks went viral and how a news station in Indiana, the article put my caption at the top, work from home worker goes to Starbucks. And then right underneath that, there's a video and I'll put that link in, in the description box. There's a video of Elon Musk stating that work from home people are lazy. And then at the bottom, there's the story of me and what I said going through the drive through and all of that. So it's how they take this and this and this to make people think that my video may have been the reason why Eli Musk is saying, go back to work. It's that chopping here, input here, and chopping there. And when they did that, the first thing I thought when they swayed it to Bill Cosby, I said, they're, they're trying to get people over here. So the media is really, mm, it's never been good. You know, it's good on something, but the, it's that power of persuasion to try to divert your attention over here. But it's a whole lot. It's more important things going on over there. So just stay focused on the things. And I kept watching that hearing and I'm waiting to see what all is gonna come about, if anything comes about. Cause let me go take myself inside of a theater and hire a fire and, and watch me get in all kinds of trouble for inciting panic. And that right there, what happened on that hill of Cap Capitol Hill was chaos. And if it was you, 45, that, that did it, which he did, then he's not above the law, so I thought. But, hey, who am I but an average working person and not a billionaire? We know, how's that, we know how that goes. So, you guys, that is the You Say What show for this week, you guys. Go check out. Y'all got some things to do. Go check out the verses if you can stand it. Now, Ray J's a whole meme. And go check out the BET Awards. Just the red carpet if you want to. And check out that congressional thing, you guys. So, <laughs> go ahead and click the video. Give the videos a thumbs up. Share the video. Comment. You know I'm engaged with you down in the comments, you guys. And we load when? Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Only if there's not complications and situations and complications, honey. <laughs> I will see you you guys again. Oh, I'm tired. Uh, again at the end of the week for another whatever on Friday. Bye.